All right, guys, welcome to the Advanced Refrigeration Podcast, Continue D2 Training. Uh, today, we're going to go over how to find the IP address inside of a controller and how to change your laptop's IP address so you could actually connect to a controller to direct connect. And I will go over a router type setup. So we're going to get started on... I'm going to show you guys in terminal mode how to find the IP address of the controller you're looking at. So you need to log into the controller first things first with a uh, user pass or whatever it is uh, that 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 customer you know specs. You're going to hold down the Alt A L T and then T. Being really slow today, guys. So Alt T will bring you to this. Where I'll show you it on the if you go to menu. You go to seven and you go to four and you go to three, which is TCP IP. If you hold on Alt T, it'll take you right to it. I'm not really sure why it's lagging out on uh, terminal mode today, but uh, so <clears throat> a couple things right here. So this controller is DHCP enable is set to yes. So DHCP enable is going to get an IP address assigned from the customer server. So this down here, this MAC address, you're gonna tell a customer what this MAC address is and they're gonna put it in their server. This is like a social security number. They're gonna put it in their server and it's going to spit out a IP address, a subnet mask, a DNS server, a default gateway, and a host name. It's gonna spit out all those for you it's all going to be in the controller um, after you power cycle it. So you would set this, if you're using DHCP enable, you set this to yes, you hit the home button, let it load, you power cycle it, and it should uh, re it should assign an IP address to it from the server. So if you look right here, if it's set to no, you have to put a static IP address in there, meaning you have to have an IP address assigned by a customer or <clears throat> one that you put in here. So if you go down to this value right here is IP address. So it's 192.168.42.100. So that's our IP address. Our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And our default gateway is 192.168.42.1. Now, you need all of these when you're trying to direct connect to an E2. So there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need an ethernet cable. Emerson claims you need a crossover cable. In the last eight years of doing this, I've never used a crossover cable. I've never had any problems direct connecting to an E2. So there's two ways you could do this. You could do this with a router. I tend to use a router a lot. And if I'm on a new startup and it's just me doing all the programming, I will put everything on a router and I'll set everything to DHCP. That way, I just could log on the Wi-Fi with my router. I don't have to change any settings. I just log on the Wi-Fi. I let the controllers all get their IP addresses from the router. It takes literally like 10 minutes to set up. <laughs> Everything gets assigned from the router and I can just connect to the controllers. That is the easiest way to do it. Now, if you're not, if you're, if your controller is on a customer's network and you need to direct connect to it to do some programming or you need to back it up, or stuff like that. Obviously, you don't want to be in your customer's network, especially after that whole like target incident. You know, customers get really picky about that. So they want you on their network. So <clears throat> you got to make your own network. So you need to direct connect to the controller. So once we have these these settings in here, what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to minimize everything, minimize ultrasite. So you're going to want to come down here to your networks tab. So under your networks tab, if you're direct connected, it's going to say unidentified Ethernet. So you want to click on that. So we're going to, this is the Wi-Fi one. So you're going to go to network and internet.
hardware and properties. Edit IP. You're going to put it to manual. It's IPv4. So now you're going to assign it an IP address. So you have to be one number off from whatever you're using. So our IP address was 192.168.1.1. One hundred, so we're gonna go. I usually go one hundred five. So our subnet mask it was two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. That is a match. Our default gateway was one nine two dot one six eight dot zero. Dot one preferred DNS is one nine two dot one six eight dot four two. I'm sorry, one six eight. Zero dot one. I usually don't put the deferred DNS. Okay, so that's how we assign the static IP address. So if it's on a uh, Ethernet plugged in, so if the Ethernet is plugged into it, you'd right click on the Ethernet, go to properties, and it's going to be TCP. IPvB4, you're going to go to properties, you're going to go to edit, and you're going to change that to a static IP. So this is this is Windows 11, so it's manual. If it's Windows 10, it's going to be static IP. Then you need to exit out of here. All right, guys, once you have that you're, you double check this, you double check your IP address, you double check your subnet mask and your default gateway. You can go ahead and minimize this and you can open up your search bar. I usually type CMD and bring it, this brings it the command prompt. Then you type PING, then 192.168.42.100. So what we're going to do is we're going to ping the IP address. So you can see right here, reply from receive for, this is how you can just verify this works before you open up Ultrasight and waste a bunch of time trying to figure out what's wrong. If this says, if there's some kind of error, so if we go 192 dot, so if we go ping 192.168.42. Forty-two dot one hundred one. See, where it says destination host host unreachable. There's nothing on the network with this IP address. So this is this is beneficial for testing controllers. If you have some kind of uh, if you want to test the Ethernet port in a controller, you think that's an issue. It's beneficial for that. So now we're going to open up Ultrasight. So we are going to go to the tree. Log back in. User pass. Okay. So we're going to do this like it's a brand new store. So we're going to add a directory. We'll call this one test. So if you don't have like a customer name, so if it was Aldi or Walmart, that's what you would have a directory under. So now you're going to add the store. So to add the site. Okay. It's going to bring up a site name. We'll call it test. Now you have options. You have an E2, an Einstein, which would be an E1, a reflex, which would be an RMCC, a reflex standard, which would be a different one. Then you have your connection type, direct connect, modem, network server, TCP, IP. 
So we're going to do TCP IP today. So you're going to type the IP address. So 192.168.42. Oop, 42.1.1. So your port is going to match whatever's in the controller. 1025 is always what I see it as, unless the customer specs it as something else. So you're going to hit OK. So now this made our site. That's our name, test. You're going to right-click the site, and you're going to go to hit connect. So now it's pulling the inventory. It's pulling the E2. So now if we collapse it, now we have all everything in here. So that that's all of our stuff in here. So... That is how you direct connect to an E2, and then you could disconnect. So you could do this on a modem. So I'll show you guys how to do that on a modem real quick. If you bring this up. So I'm already connected to this router. This router's already this router's already connected to uh I disconnected where to go. So we're going to connect to this router. This is the router that I have connected to my controller downstairs. So we're on the router. So if we right click, hit connect. I don't have to change my IP address when I'm already connected to the router because the, the laptop's going to automatically get an IP address assigned from the router. And it's automatically going to be the same setup as the IP address in the controller. So that's why using a router is a lot easier because you don't have to mess around with any of that, but that's how you would connect on a router. So it's a lot easier. Thanks for watching, guys, and 